Hello everyone, I'm Zeenat Islam, Relations Manager, Academia Network, and welcome to the 36th session of our YSBC web lecture series. Today's discussion is on the topic of creating employment opportunities through social business with speaker Takuya Kawamura, who's the president SunPower Corp, who's also the managing director of SunPower Senegal, West Africa, co-CEO Grameen Japan, SunPower Auto, the president World Recycle Parts Japan. Uh, the session today will be moderated by Ms. Nazneen Sultana, who's the Managing Director and the Chief Executive Officer of Grumming Communications. A background about our speaker today. After graduating from university in Japan, he worked in Germany and in the US at the world's number two global auto company. He did not see the link of happiness um, of people and the success of Korea. He had a chance to read Professor Mohamed Yunus's book, Creating a World Without Poverty, which changed his vision of life. At 35, he joined SunPower Corp with the mission of changing it completely into a social business. And currently, he's the president of the company. About our moderator today, uh, Ms. Nassim Sultana has been serving as the managing director and the chief executive officer of Grameen Communications since its inception in 1997. At Grameen Communications, she led various projects for reaching ICT to the remote villages of Bangladesh, including the development of the world's first and complete microbanking software that has been used by 150 MFIs, including Grameen Bank. Uh, she was also actively involved in the formation of some social business companies, such as Glamin Euclina. Having experience in IT a field for, the, for more than 25 years, she has been serving as the director of different IT companies, including Accenture Bangladesh. Moreover, she serves as executive member of NGOs that deal with gender issues, affordable health care for the poor, women empowerment, and ICT for development. So a really exciting session awaits on creating employment opportunities through social business today. And uh, let us start the session with welcoming words from Professor Mohamed Yunus. Professor Yunus. Thank you. Welcome to everybody. Today we have a very lucky evening. It's a fantastic combination of two sterling persons uh, who led the way completely on their own as an individual. Nazneen, you just heard, she has single-handedly built up the whole digital infrastructure of microcredit uh, through Grameen Bank. At that time, computer hardly existed. Uh, you don't know what the computer is all about. And this is the beginning of it. And uh, she dared to get into it, build up the software and build up the network. And it, electricity didn't exist in the villages where we wanted to make sure all the branches have digital connectivity and so on. So this is an exciting experience to have uh, Nazdin with uh, Takuya, Takuya Kaomura. Uh, I, I was in Japan visiting. And uh, in one of those visits, I was taken to a coffee shop where several Japanese business people are waiting for me to uh, somewhere to talk to me. And I was told that they're all uh, car spare parts people, the spare parts dealers. So I was wondering what the spare parts dealer got to do with me. What am I supposed to talk to them about? Uh, they are the hard nosed business people of Japan. And so it's a mid, mid size and small size businesses, not a big mega businesses, very, very hard working business people individually build those businesses. So I was talking to them and then I was introduced to one young person who is uh, supposed to be a teacher. I said, how come the teacher got into this uh, uh, spare parts people? Then he told how he got interested in the social business and he wants to make this uh, group of spare parts people get involved with the social business. That's quite a challenge for me. But he took this challenge together with me and then continued to work and created company after company. He did it in Bangladesh. He will still explain how he came to Bangladesh and why did it. Now he's spreading the whole news and uh, whole idea in uh, Africa. So they're very fascinating thing that uh, an academic joining hands with the spare parts people uh, and then getting involved with social business, transforming the spare parts business into a social business uh, involvement into it. So uh, you will not believe it until he hear from him. So today we are a luck, we have a lucky day uh, listening to these two fantastic people on our hand. So I leave the floor to Nazdin. The floor is yours. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the nice introduction. I'm very much pleased to be part of this great initiative. So Thank you, sir, again. And hello, Kaumura-san. Hello. It's OK. We can now start our session. 
Okay. Kaumurasan, you are an academic and you started your career with the number two company in the US, then got involved with the business of exporting used cars from Japan. This is far away from the social business. Please tell us about your involvement with social business. What inspired you? How did it start? Did you have clear idea to design the social business? Please tell us your yep. story. Thank you, Nazari Napa. And thank you, uh, thank you everyone, those who participate in this seminar. And before I start to answer the question, thank you again to Professor Yunus um, for inviting me to this wonderful uh, event. Uh, always exciting to spend, uh, share the time with uh, social business leaders around the globe. So starting to answer your question, Nazanin Appa, as, uh, uh, as, I, as I was introduced at the beginning, um, before joining Sun Power, Sun Power Corporation, uh, almost 12 years ago. Um, I worked in Germany, Japan, and also in the United States at the Ford Motor Company, a very big company, as everybody knows, a global company, multinational companies, lots of talented pe people, uh, lots of talented managers and general managers and etc. And many people, they have the average two masters, not only one, but I realized that they have two masters. One is from the MBA, the other one from the, either from the manufacturing or from the engineering. So lots of talented people working at our company. But um, I didn't see the link uh, between the success of the career and happiness of the people, I mean, happiness of the employees. I didn't know at the time what kind of pro problems in, uh, behind the, the, the situation, but I clearly saw the significant failure. Why are we not happy? Uh, but we have a lot of the higher, higher level education. So I, I felt a significant failure in our system, educational system, social system, or economic system and, 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 and et cetera. But I didn't know the reason, but like I said, I, I recognized, I clearly recognized significant failure in our system, in our society. That was when I was in the United States. And at the time, I was very lucky to take a look and read the Professor Muhammad Yunus book titled, Create the World Without Poverty. I was very impressed, but at the same time, I was very shocked by the idea and the principle about the social business by the Professor Muhammad Yunus. And I strongly thought that social business is, is, is a way we can become happy through our job. That's social business for me. Because like I said, because I worked in a very big company, stock listed company, I already knew at that time that it is very difficult for many of the stock listed company like my company to follow Professor Muhammad Yunus idea because as everybody knows, clearly owners of the company care only the profit. Their only, only favorite, their favorite is money. Their favorite is, is, is the profit. So instead of the big company, as Professor Yunus said at the beginning, I thought it must be the very good opportunity uh, for a small to mid-sized company to follow his ideas. The moment reassured my vision that I want to transform some power into a completely social business company when I joined. Your other question is why you stay as? Why auto parts? Why social business and how social business? I, I guess that's a very good question. When I look at the used tire business or auto parts business, from the social business perspective, I saw the great opportunities there. So I saw the two great opportunities. When I look at the 
uh, secondhand part and use their business from the, like I said, from a social business angle. So number one, job opportunities to the handicapped or vulnerable people, whatever you call. Uh, for your information in Japan, uh, we have a very serious problem every year. More than 20,000 people suicide from the mental illness perspective. In the official statics, uh, it's more than 20,000, but unofficially, reality, uh, the number is much bigger. Those people, we need you know, uh, help these people. So number one aspect from the social business perspective, when I look at my business is, I thought we can provide the job opportunities to, like I said, handicapped and vulnerable people, like I said, the mental illness people, physically problem people. We have lots of the single mothers, still single mothers in Japan, it's very difficult to get a job. And people, especially young generation, young people out of the prison or, or, or jail. And also we have many young, uh, young people studying in Japan, coming from the developing countries. Still the, the, the young people from develop country, developing countries, it's not easy for them to find a job that they want to work. So I thought it's a very good opportunity to provide the job opportunities to the, these people. And as of today, uh, out of my employees, 53%, so more than 50% are somehow, somehow in, uh, in the handicap and the vulnerable uh, segmentations. When I joined Sampara, the, the number was 10%. 10% out of the total employees is in a, in a handicap situation, but now, it is 53%. And according to our plan, uh, in two years, the number is gonna be 70%. Uh, so this is very important social business factor oh. for us, for us sample. Uh, finally, number two, opportunity to deliver the social business entrepreneurs in the developing countries like in Africa. Uh, if, you, if you look at the situation, for example, let's say, for example, in Africa, second-hand product business can be very feasible to launch in the Africa. So we thought we can provide the opportunity and recruit a young generation studying in Japan and coming from, from the developing countries. And right now we have the 21 young uh, people working at some point in Japan from Africa or from, from, from Asia so far. We launched uh, three social business companies in Africa using this social business entrepreneurship program, uh, Senegal, Botswana, and Madagascar. This is how I have transformed some power into a social business company over the last 10 years. Back to Nazarene. Over the last 10 years, Kaburasan. Yeah. So you are in this business. What type of challenge you faced? And how did you overcome it? Thank you. So we, we, from my personal experience over the last 10 years during, I was enjoying at the same time, I was struggling to transform the company into social business. Uh, I had two, uh, two things that I need to overcome. The first, number one is understanding of the employees. So I must spend a great amount of energy to continue to explain to each of the employee why this company has to be the social business company, philosophy, ideas, and principle. Number two is the profit generation, because always it is easy for us to create a profit driven by the conventional type of the business way. Especially, uh, we can easily maximize the profits within the short period. But this is a social business. So we, has, we, we, we need to try to see the profit maximization or profit generation, not uh, within the short term, 
but uh, long term, like uh, three to five years time frame. So these two okay. main things that we need to overcome. Okay, okay, thank you. On the so uh, today, do you think it was a good decision? What role Bangladesh is playing in your business? But and can you outline some uh, future plan in Bangladesh? Oh, Bangladesh plan? Yeah, just a moment. Yeah, Bangladesh. What's your future plan for Bangladesh? This. Yeah, just a moment. Uh, Bangladesh example is very important uh, because I wanted to uh, set up the social business company with uh, Professor Yunus yeah. uh, to illustrate the importance of the social business. So it's very important for our Grammy Japan Sampa Awards in Bangladesh, uh, not only as growing in the, uh, taking the uh, appropriate step to grow in Bangladesh, for me or for us, it's very important to uh, copy and paste our social business model that we gain in Bangladesh. And we put the same social business model in uh, other countries in Asia. And of course, it's important for me uh, in Africa. Yeah. Are, are you uh, enjoying the social business? Uh, yeah, uh, is your example drawing attention the other businessmen in Bangladesh? Sure, sure. What do, you, of course. What do you think? Of course, of course. So, uh, as I know, so far I know, in Bangladesh, selling good quality auto parts for maintenance of the used cars has been limited. Yep. In this competition, in this business, it is very formidable. Customers look into the price tag. Good yep. quality means high price. Yep. Then turn to cheap, low quality price. How, yep. can you, how can you uphold your business model? Thank you. Is it, Thank is you. it uh, sorry, <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Nazarene Appa. Actually, this is this is very good question. Actually, Try providing a good learning insight to the young generation. I don't know how many participating in uh, from Africa or from Asia. This is always, this is always happen. Not in Bangladesh, but also in uh, in the rest of the region in the world, because always. Whether you are in Bangladesh, whether I am in Japan, China, Korea, or Germany, Brazil, people always want to buy the cheap product. Uh, regard, same uh, in our Bangladesh also. Everybody yeah, same jump Bangladesh. on the everybody jump on the cheap price, cheap quality uh, things. Yeah. So the question, as you said, why higher cost products from Japan? And I, I like to give you the good example. Uh, from from our experience in Africa, uh, as I said, we have we launched the Sampa Senegal uh, four years or four five years ago. Uh, before we work, uh, we Sampa Senegal, we can buy the cheap cheap products, uh, second hand parts and used tires from Europe, because. We, from the geographical perspective, we, we get closer to the Europe. Uh, so we can get a lot of the, you know, we can minimize the logistic costs and all, 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 all that things. And lots of the, actually lots of the second hand parts uh, from Europe. But like I said, the question is why some customers, including ourselves, some part Senegal wants to buy the parts, for example, from Japan, even at, much higher cost. For, uh, I, I continue the Sampa Senegal example. When Sampa Senegal imports 40 feet container, very big container uh, from Japan, we Sampa Senegal pay almost 8,000 US dollars to the shipping company to pay the ocean freight. 
And additionally, we some part Senegal has to pay five to six thousand US dollars duty, import duty to the government in Senegal. So we in total we pay the thirteen thousand to fourteen thousand uh, US dollars to uh, to the shipping company and the government. So we pay very high cost to buy the products from Japan instead of buying from Europe. So again, why? Um, answer is very simple. Security of the drive. If you see the opportunity, this is very important actually business versus social business from my perspective. If you see the opportunity in a business eyes, you must sell the cheap ones because it's easy and you can get anybody because everybody wants to buy the cheap ones. You buy, you try to buy the cheap products and you try to sell your products at your customers at cheap. Only thing you have to take care is a business to make your profit, make your revenue. However, if you see the opportunity in a social business eye, situation is different. You must not sell the you must not sell the, the product, but you have to sell the security. Because problem is security. So physically, we see it seems that we sell the second hand parts, but we don't have to sell the second hand parts. We have to sell the security to our cust uh, to our customers because this is an area of the social issues in the automotive. And this is why I set up the, in case of the Bangladesh, this is why uh, Professor Yunus and I agreed to set up the joint venture company. But generally speaking, I still see that in Bangladesh or, uh, and, and, uh, and also in my Africa, uh, everybody try to get all the customer, try to uh, sell the, uh, the product are cheap because they care the business. So, so we must change our mindset to sell the security to our local customers. In order to sell the security, we must prepare a lot of the materials and data to explain to our customers. Okay. Back to Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. What do you think? Training for the automobile training, uh, yep. is it uh, uh, for the Bangladesh? Bangladeshi young people will be interested to, to take the training. What are you uh, thinking? Thank you. Thank you, Nazarin. This is also a very good question. Training is so important, whether it's a social business. In our or... country, we don't have the much training center auto parts or hybrid car like this. So for that reason. Yeah, yeah. Whether business or social business, training is very important, so important because always happiness to me, happiness of our employees are the base of the company. So training is very important. Training is very critical. Even this pandemic situation, uh, we can do it uh, by online at any time on top of that in near future, because this is a joint venture uh, in uh, between Japan and Bangladesh, technically uh, on top of training, what I was, what I was uh, planning is to recruit. Uh, we can also provide the job opportunities to uh, one of the yeah. yes, uh, our joint venture company, and we can get a working visa uh, because this is joint venture company. Uh, so we can, uh, they can do a, a physical training in Japan uh, for some years. Why not? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sometimes, sometimes I'm asking many questions. Okay. Sometimes you have been talking about the electric vehicle. Yep. Is it uh, becoming a serious initiative? What is your plan for the G Japan in Bangladesh? And are you giving up the auto parts and auto maintenance business or you want to move forward with this business, previous business? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for this question again. 
Yes. Yes, uh, as uh, as I said at the beginning, I am from the automotive, uh, working at the old uh, parts division uh, at the Ford Motor Company. Uh, electric, electric vehicles are one of my ultimate goal. Of course, uh, through the social business. So it's always so great if we manufacture, first manufacture and sell the EBs and, and, and the Bangladesh, since we can paste and copy the, like I already said at the beginning, uh, we, we should do it. And once we do it, uh, we should copy and paste our EV uh, social business model into other countries in Asia and, uh, and uh, in Africa. But organization is, as everybody know, organizational organization is always critical. So we need to talk and come up with a good organizational structure to work for the EVs uh, since the management team is critical. Yes, we are hoping for that. <laughs> okay. okay. Recently, we have seen you are very active in Africa. Yep. So what type of business you are taking to Africa? Can you tell us your Africa experience and your plan for Africa? Thank you. Thank you, Nazarin. Africa is very active now in Africa. <laughs> you already mentioned in your introduction also the Senegal and many places you are working. Yep. Thank you. Uh, I don't know why, but for some reasons, I don't know why. I don't know the reason, but for some reason, we have uh, a lot of connections uh, in Africa. Maybe my, my past life uh, I was African, I don't know, <laughs> but uh, we, have, we have a lot of connections in Africa. As I said, uh, Senegal, Guinea, uh, Benin, Republic of Central Africa, Botswana, Madagascar, and so on and so on. Uh, our focus in Africa, of course, we do the uh, social business, doing the second hand parts and, and, and the, the uh, use tires business. But our focus is to uh, uh, recruit a young generation from Africa in Japan and sharing our social business model and know-how and help them to start up, uh, start up some power uh, so that they can become the social business entrepreneurs. Uh, that's our focus because human being is very important. Uh, if we have the uh, good ones or good leaders, we have the good society. Uh, so that's uh, that's a, that's our focus right now. And so far, we have the uh, three social business companies uh, in Africa. Africa. More to come. You are also working for the Three Zero Club. Yep. Which is now our focus, Professor Yunus is focused to uh, in the young generation. Focus on the young generation. Yep. And why is this? So what are you doing in Africa regarding the Trijuru Club and YSBC? Thank you. Center, uh, Thank you. Social Thank what is your experience so far? Thank you. Thank you for this question. Yeah, actually, the, I helped to, uh, to launch the two UNUS uh, social business centers in Africa last year. Uh, one is in Benin, the other one is in the Republic of the Central uh, Africa. So far, to be honest with you, Nazarene, I have very good impression from the team in Africa. I strongly, uh, I firmly believe that uh, many, many African people are looking for the support to understand the social business and also to support to launch uh, the, the, the social business. Uh, I know that there are a lot of the initiative are implemented by the uh, UNUS Center and its team. And initiative by UNUS Center uh, penetrating in, in Africa is to me is very important. And I believe that that initiative is greatly appreciated by the people in Africa. What do you see future in Africa regarding the social business? How the, when you're talking about the business people, uh, social business, how the business people react with your idea, social business discussion. So what is their reaction? 
how they react. Can you tell something about, because you spend a lot of times in Africa. Yeah, it's, my answer is very simple. Uh, it's very, very important. Uh, it's very important. Uh, we need to help the people in Africa. Uh, of course, we need to help the people in the rest of the, 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 the regions, but especially we need to uh, help the people in Africa. And we need, from that perspective, we need to continue to uh, plant the seeds uh, for the future uh, in Africa. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, Thank you. do you have any suggestion for the UNU Center or the 30 Global Center regarding mm -hmm. the promoting the 30 Club and social business in Africa? Do you see some countries in Africa are more interested in social business than the other countries because you have a experience in other countries also? Yeah, what thank type you. of suggestion you want to give to the UNO you know, Center or advice? Yeah, thank you. Uh, everybody, it, to me, uh, it's clear that everybody in the world is looking for the support from the UNO Center. Uh, people are very desperate to, to survive themselves. And at the same time, people are very desperate uh, to solve the problems uh, in front of them. Um, my small suggestion from, from in my personal viewpoint, uh, it's gonna be great if we launch Unicentres centers and also the Threezer Club, uh, especially in a junior high school and high school uh, because the, the, this type of the uh, students, their age segmentation is somehow between 13 and 18. So this generation, they don't know their future yet. They don't know their career yet. They don't decide anything else. So to this segmentation, uh, junior high and high school, I think it's very valuable and very appreciated uh, if we uh, launch the Unicentre Center with three zero crowds. That's what said. Okay. Do you see when you're working in the Bangladesh, Japan, and uh, Africa, do you see any difference between men and women in responding <laughs> to the social business? <laughs> uh, that, uh, I think that's a very good question. I think the more or less uh, we, we discuss this type of things, men versus women uh, uh, in all the regions. So my answer, my personal view, I see the, from my experience, I see there's no difference between men and women because we are all same human. Uh, it's not, uh, it's not an uh, issue. However, the real issue that we need to recognize is, I think it's lack of the opportunities for women uh, because I am the one of the men, uh, as you see me, and I'm not female, I'm a man. So we men, uh, my view, we men must uh, try more effort to appreciate the value of the women. And we men must change our mindset to recognize the value of the women. Uh, I don't know whether this example is appropriate uh, or not appropri appropriate, but if you look at the situation, global climate problems, and uh, war between Russia and uh, Ukraine. Man society, we men feel no pain to destroy our planet. And we men feel no pain to kill the human being. It's, 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 it's man society. So I, I firmly believe whether we do the social business or business for all the human beings to survive on this planet, we men must change our mindset and provide more trust, provide more credibility, and provide more responsibilities to the women. Oh, thank, thank you. you. I'm a woman. <laughs> so I'm very <laughs> proud of you, thank your comment. Uh, another um, question from my side. Yep. Is, uh, 
how do you feel the african business leaders feel interested for the social business or they are interested for the traditional business thank you thank you for african that african business leaders so sure. that's also the very uh, important question i believe uh, as i said uh, earlier uh, yes uh, many many are very hungry to help you know many people in africa uh, especially the leaders leadership people they are very hungry to help help the, their countries in africa but from my experience in africa real issues in africa are politics uh, we need to change the leaders in politics otherwise uh, i personally believe that uh, we cannot provide a real future real future for the young generation in africa i give you one example i think this is a very good example where we talk the, the the business process social business in africa uh, as i said we have the sampa senegal ceo of sampa senegal uh, muhammadou dieng he's very young guy he's 27 or 28 his father sampa senegal ceo's father his father uh, went for the pre presidential presidential election twice uh, before uh, in Senegal. He knows Professor Muhammad Yunus. He's very, he respects the Professor Yunus. He is very impressed with the social business. So the motivation for his father to go for the presidential election is he wanted to help the people at the village in Senegal because in politics, always politicians uh, pay attention to the people in capital, they talk to the uh, lots of the big companies and big countries, uh, but in the eyes of his father, the roles and responsibilities to the politician is to help the people at the village. So this is why he wanted to, only the motivation, as I said, uh, for him to become the president in Senegal, he wants to because he knows that I have the business, a social business in Bangladesh, in other country. So he wanted to drive the social business in Senegal. Uh, this is only the motivation. Uh, he decided to uh, become the president. I was very impressed. So we need to this type of the more, 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 more stories. Otherwise, uh, I, 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 I feel that uh, young leaders, young leaders in Africa feel, feel the have a lot of the stress over, over the course of their life to launch the social business. Okay, so we are hoping from many businesses, social business will come up uh, from the Africa. One <laughs> question for you, for your personal. After all these years in social business promotion, do you feel interested or frustrated? What, what is your feelings? <laughs> yeah, of course, uh, that's life, pandemic, everything. We have the lots of challenges here and there. But uh, personally, and also, if we look at the uh, seven principle, Professor in the seven principle, last one is uh, with joy. Doing joy, yeah. Doing joy. <laughs> I think this is very philosophical word. So I think it's important for us, whatever the situations uh, in front of us, I think it's important for us to, to be always try to fun and always try to uh, 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 enjoy uh, over the course of the social business initiative. Okay, I think uh, we have discussed a lot. Now, finally, I want yep. to ask you, what's your plan? for the next five years at the social business front, in auto parts, in electric vehicles, in converting business people into the 3G business people. You Thank are you. Plan or you are planning something completely new, other. Yeah. Uh, plan for the five, uh, next five years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Grammy Japan support is very important uh, for me. Uh, it's uh, still the beginning process, but it's very important. So uh, 
if I see the gram in Japan sample watch as an example, uh, we want to add somehow, as, as I said uh, a couple of times during this conversation, uh, especially during this pandemic situation, everybody is struggling to survive. Everybody is struggling to get a job. Everybody needs to get the security. And I clearly remember one year ago during the social business day, Professor Yunus said the word of the social franchise. He reiterated the importance of the social franchise. And I 100% agree. So my vision, my personal vision, if I look at the Grammy Japan support in Bangladesh, we have to grow. Uh, we have to initiate a lot of the business from the social business angles in automotive sectors in Bangladesh. But once we have done this objective, uh, I want to get us ready to start a social franchise, uh, starting the hybrid car repairing and we're selling a second hand parts in other countries uh, in Asia uh, and also hopefully uh, in Africa through my uh, sample companies. And um, it, it must be fantastic as you questioned at the beginning. Uh, it's very important for us to launch the, somehow the electric vehicle selling first and after manufacturing uh, in five years. That's my view. Yeah, thank you, thank you. So uh, today, I think the young generation, young people are our audience. So for the young people, do you have any message for the young entrepreneur, young generation, and the three zero club people? So you have any message to them for Thank the you. social business, for the betterment of the social business and the new initiatives? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Nazarin san. Uh, I personally always believe that honesty is very important. Uh, honesty. Uh, when I worked in a very big company in the US and in, in Germany, like I said at the beginning, people are so talented, but many of them at the end of the day cannot become the successful. And I, I, and I think that a part of the big reason is because of the honesty. Always thinking process is a profit driven. So, because if you are a young generation, I like to state that honesty is a base of your decision making process. Uh, from, from the long term perspective, you, 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 you're going to be uh, very successful. The other, the other finally, uh, other my uh, message is be hungry to get a chance. Thank you. Okay. One question from the audience. So, Can I ask, what do you mean by Japan security compared with the Europe? Considering the spare parts, it's from the... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, that's a good question. Um, from the Europe, uh, because Jap in Japan, there is a unique regulation in the automotive. Governments, uh, uh, governments recommend the consumers to throw away the, the parts uh, after certain years. It's because we believe that they want to help the uh, big companies to sell the promoter selling. But this is a unique law. So if you, if you look at the situation in, in Europe, there is no this type of regulation. So once the people in Africa get the parts, the secondhand parts, uh, it's way used by the people in Europe. Uh, if you, even if you look at the parts from Japan uh, and Europe, even the visual is same, but the way a number of the years uh, the, 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 the part is, is used in the country is, is, is different. So from the country, uh, the part from Japan is very fresh. So, okay. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So I would like to hand over the Jinath, the session. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you very much. This has indeed been a great conversation. Um, you know, you shared your personal story of um, happiness driving your initiative, and that's very important. How you said you um, put emphasis on the happiness of your employees. That's really, really important to the success of company and overall functioning. And you narrated your story of um, involvement in Africa. And I've personally also worked with you through UNO Center for the establishment of the two wise species in the Central African Republic and Benin. So thank you very, very much. This has been a great conversation. Uh, thank you to Nazneen Appa for bringing up the story. Um, we really enjoyed it. And uh, these will be in our records um, on YouTube and um, on our social media platforms. To, so anyone who has missed it and wishes to watch it later at your convenient time, please do check out our social business pedia, which will have the archives and of course on YouTube. And this always remains as a very, very valuable resource for everyone to watch, you know, from our future um, um, interns who wish to know about us, um, the social business companies, for anyone, anyone who wish to know about what um, social business companies are doing all over the world and not only in Bangladesh. So thank you very, very much for your contribution. We really appreciate it. Um, so with that, we conclude today's session. But before that, we will be watching a slideshow on our upcoming lectures and also on Social Business Day, which is coming up. So Social Business Day is an our annual event on social business. Um, our experts from all over the world will be joining us uh, through Zoom platforms and, and some live events that will be happening in universities in Africa. So um, this Social Business Day, you can register. Registration is open. Uh, you will see the link on the screen and also on the chat box my colleague will share please please register for social business day you can access um to zoom and be a participant in there you uh, the link has been posted in the chat box uh, please invite your friends colleagues families to join it will be really interesting sessions where you will be hearing stories of what social business entrepreneurs are doing and how you can also contribute not only as um you know um older person, a younger person, anyone can contribute. Uh, there are going to be sessions on three zero clubs for our younger audience. Um, so it's open for all and we look forward to seeing you. Uh, so now please kindly play the slides on the event. And with that, we conclude today's session. Thank you very much. Uh, we will see everyone again soon. Thank you very much. Thank the you. Slideshow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.